Yeah, I am Associate Professor Joel Bazira in the Department of Microbiology. And uh, microbiology deals with the understanding of these small organisms that we studied in primary school, bacteria, virus, protozoa, fungus, that actually cause disease in human beings. Uh, as a department, we have many sections. We have this section where we are sitting today, which is the genomics and translational laboratory. Here, we go deep, not only to look at the organism in the microscope, but we go to, to, to break it down to what makes it up, what people have called the DNA. And this helps us to understand these organisms better. You have heard that they are talking about the different variants of, of COVID. This is the, uh, the London uh, variant. This is the Hong Kong variant. It's because they look at their genetic makeup and see the difference at that level. So this lab is able to help us do that at that level. And it does more than just look at organisms. It can also look at other uh, plants and animals as long as they have DNA in them, which means we can be able to tell. We have a student studying different local pigs, so we want to help her understand the different kinds of local pigs that we have. In Uganda, we've had students study fennet, jackfruit, different types of fennet that we have in Uganda. We do that at the uh, genetic level. And uh, we have seen the other lab where we have a gene expert, which is a machine that originally came in to test for TB, but has now been used to test for COVID. So it is uh, able to test for COVID in here. And then we've gone to the classical microbiology lab. In that classical microbiology lab, we do look for organisms that cause disease in humans and animals, but also look, test drugs or herbs that are able to treat these organisms. You have seen an example of a garlic extract, which uh, our students are, use, are testing to see how it can be used to fight organisms that cause typhoid, that cause wounds. We call them uh, Salmonella, and also call them Staphylococcus aureus. So as a department, that is what we have been involved in. And we believe that we shall be more involved in testing these hubs to be able to be sure that they're not only testing COVID, because COVID has unmasked a lot of things. You know, everything comes with either bad or good things. So COVID has opened up the avenue of herbal medicine. So we expect to help many more people study hubs and how they are able to treat uh, infections that are either caused by fungi, bacteria, uh, that we always deal with. Uh, this epidemic has affected us, the way we teach our students. We have quite a number of students. In the second year, we have about 250 students, but definitely we could not bring them here to teach them. So we have been teaching them online, trying to get them demos that they can use to learn. And uh, we had a viva with them recently, and we think that somehow they have not lost it all at the end of the day. We have also uh, taught our postgraduate students mostly online, so we're able to teach them from wherever they are, and most of these are actually working in the health sector, so in there they are able to learn and also go and offer meaningful service to, to the community. So we think that going forward we will continue this mode of teaching, especially from postgraduate students and PhD students, so that they are not fully removed from their workplaces, they're able to gain knowledge and skills and also continue to offer service to the students. We also continue to do research, testing these hubs uh, for ability to kill or ability to treat uh, infections that are common. Not only COVID, but you see also know that COVID comes with so many other uh, infections. We have also read that most of the people who have died during COVID actually have not died because of the, the virus, but because of the bacteria that comes along after the virus has affected them. 
and most of this bacteria has been found to be resistant to the common drugs that we have. So we are engaging in that research to support the management of these uh, uh, people that are suffering from these diseases. We want to call upon the general public, the students, to come to MAST because MAST is a very good university. MAST trains very good microbiologists. I can proudly say that our master's program has produced very excellent students. We have teachers right now teaching in Kabale University, in Soroti University, in Busitema University. We just sent two to Muni University. We have those that are teaching across the border in Rwanda. We have people that are working in research. We have supplied researchers to Epicenter. We have people that are working in CPHL, which is the uh, best lab in Uganda. We have people that are working in IUIU University. So coming to study Masters of Medical Microbiology in MAST, you will have a very good advantage. You will have be in very good company. Even postgraduates, we have PhD students. We have PhD students, you know, literally working in very many places in Uganda. So come, you will have the best resources. We have very supportive mentorship programs. We assure you, you can never fail if you come to study with us in MAST. So we call upon you, come. The fees of the university is really the best in the whole of this country. So come. And for those of you who have never been to Mbarara, this is the pearl of Africa. This is the, the, there is a lot of food, there is a lot of milk. Come, the city is the fastest growing city in, in, in Uganda. So there is a lot for you. We have people not only from Uganda, we have postgraduates that are coming from Somalia, coming from West Africa. We also host not only students, but we also host people that are interested in learning. You know, we have people that are on exchange programs coming from outside of Uganda. We have hosted people from Europe. We've hosted scholars from the USA. So opportunities are open for you to come and be part of what is happening in MAST. And as our motto says, succeed, we must. In MAST, we don't fail. Succeed, we must.